For eight hours, he'd climb through the skeletal ribs of the ship, attaching conduit, installing replacement maneuvering thrusters, patching holes. He didn't know how to do everything that needed to be done, but he wanted to. So he shadowed the technicians doing the really complicated work. It all felt very normal, very routine, almost like still having his old life. But then he'd return to his apartment eight hours later and no one would be there. He was truly alone for the first time in years. Amos wouldn't come by asking him to hit a bar. Alex wouldn't watch the video stream sitting on his couch and making sarcastic comments to the screen. Naomi wouldn't be there to ask about his day and compare notes on how the repairs were coming. The rooms even smelled empty. It wasn't something about himself he'd ever had to face before. For, but Holden was coming to realize how much he needed family. Hey guys, Pete here. It's a little late, but as there doesn't seem to be a episode 4 trailer, today I thought I'd do a quick video about what comes next in The Expanse Season 5. You can expect spoilers for everything that's happened in The Expanse TV show through Season 5, Episode 3. I've read all the books, and I will be referring to them, but I won't give away any future spoilers that come from there. With all that said, let's get into it. Episode 3 ended with a major event. A giant asteroid crashed to Earth's surface. And there's been a lot of discussion online about how big this might be, how it'll compare to what happened in the books. At this point, I think it's best to avoid speculating and keep things sort of general. This is not an insignificant event. And it goes beyond the actual damage from the impact. Now, of course, we know that there are more of these things aimed at Earth and coming its way. We don't know if they'll hit or not. But if you look at things on the scale of terrorism, terrorism not only to take millions or hundreds of millions of lives, which this most likely will do, but also to produce fear. No one on planet Earth will be able to feel safe in the aftermath of this. It's unprecedented in its scale, as far as we can tell, in the audacity of going after humanity's home planet. Marco Anaros' plan seems to be working, and we will get back to him when we talk about Naomi. But for now, let's check in with some of the other characters, including Avasarala, who has figured out that he's behind it. In the first three episodes, we saw that she pieced together that Marco had thrown a stealth-covered rock at Earth. The private sector scientist confirmed her suspicions. She got further confirmation when Fred Johnson sent her the recording of Marco talking from Ashford. But she's stuck in a situation with politics being as they are. No one will listen to her and there's nothing she can do. I'd say most of what we've seen from her so far is character development, showing us where she's at. She wasn't able to prevent the first rock from hitting, but the information she's gathered and what she's doing with Bobby will likely play an important role in going after Marco after the fact. She's on Luna, so the character who's closest to Ground Zero right now is actually Amos. Amos is on Earth. He didn't really show up in Episode 3, but at the end of Episode 2, we saw he finished his business looking into what happened to Lydia. At the end of that, he reached out to Avasarala and told her he was never coming back to Earth, but there was one person he wanted to see and he needed her help to arrange that. This is one of those things that I definitely know who he's talking about. If you've read the books, you know as well. If you've been paying close attention, you might also know. But otherwise, it's something I really can't touch. I think what's more important here is that he is on the planet and will be in a position to experience that, the aftermath, in a way that no one else will. Humanity's home is under attack, and I opened the video with an excerpt from a Holden chapter from Nemesis Games, where he's feeling separated from the crew and realizing how important they are to him and how much he needs a family. Many of the stories for the characters in this season is going back and facing the past. In that process, Holden is feeling separated, he's lonely there at Tycho, but he's also found himself in the middle of what's going on there as well with Fred Johnson. It's clear that somebody is working against their interests on the station. There's a mole. Monica is keeping the idea of the protomolecule in the story, and this has actually changed somewhat from the book, so I'm not exactly sure what they're doing, but with her showing the video of Paulo Cortazar being abducted by Belters, and then Anderson Dawes confirming that that happened on series, does hint that there's a bigger conspiracy going on than just throwing a couple of asteroids at the Earth. Keep in mind that Holden did lie to Monica when she asked him about the protomolecule. She asked him if he kept a sample, which he didn't. The Rossi crew actually gave the sample they had to Fred Johnson. 
And in the first episode, we saw that Fred mentioned that he still has it and no, he won't give it up. As far as Monica's abduction, that seems to be a coordinated effort by someone. Fred Bull and Holden have a plan to catch some of the conspirators when they try to come pick up the container that Monica's supposed to be in. But without knowing where loyalties lie inside the station itself, it's hard to speculate on what's going on there. Elsewhere in the belt, we have Drummer, who we've seen is working in piracy. She's entered into a polyamorous family. They now have three ships. And after finding Ashford's ship, the Tynan, Drummer decided that she wanted to go after Marco for the bounty. One of the things I saw in discussions about the episodes was some people thought it was out of character for Drummer to become a pirate. And I can say that I kind of understand where people are coming from. But if you think back to her arc in season four, it does track. Remember, she quit working for Fred Johnson at Medina Station. She thought his decision to work with the Inners got dozens of Belters killed, and that Marco was going to be able to use that to rally thousands of Belters to his side. And where Drummer's going is always hard to figure out because she's a combination of different characters from the books. But I think where they're going for here is that she's looking for independence. She followed Anderson Dawes. She followed Fred Johnson. Those experiences led her to be disillusioned. And now she's found this new family and she decided to stay out of politics. They're pirates and she decided to sign on with them. She did make the decision to pass the information to Fred Johnson that Ashford had recorded, but she did that with a caveat that it wasn't her fight. Going forward, it'll be interesting to see if she still wants to go after Marco and what effect that has on her new family situation, as we saw through Oksana that the crew isn't 100% on board with the idea. Our final story in the belt is Naomi. In the first three episodes, we saw her arrive at Palace Station, where she realized that Philip is in too deep with Marco in the Free Navy. That realization came way too late, as she's basically now been taken hostage. There was a lot going on with her interactions with her old crewmates, Sin and Corral, and then her finally talking to her son after all this time. She has no idea what's going on yet, but Philip's decision to take her back is going to put her in a really crazy situation. I think we could say for sure after watching the season 5 trailer that Marco's going to take responsibility for the rock hitting Earth. Philip played an active role in the planning and he's complicit in this event. Now Naomi is going to be with them, which isn't a great place to be when all this goes down. But it's also a really interesting situation because what they're doing is a massive attack. They are intending to kill a lot of people. There's really no way that anybody could justify this. But what's interesting about Naomi is that she understands how Marco operates. She knows how he manipulates people. And she knows this firsthand because of the August and Gamora and what he did there. That was his first big attack. And he had her write the code, making her complicit. And when she wasn't all right with that, that's when he took Philip away. So you have a mother who's looking at her son, knowing he's involved with these things, that he's an active participant, but she also has an understanding of Marco, so it's going to be hard for her to separate that from the reality of what's going on. Plus, she hasn't seen Marco for years. They're going to be, in a way, reunited, and that's going to bring all of that stuff back up to the surface as well. A lot of interesting stuff going on with Naomi and her story. To round out the rest of the characters, we have Alex and Bobby on Mars. Bobby has made a lot of progress for Abasarala looking into all these black market weapon deals, and she's landed on Sobater as her main suspect. Alex wasn't able to get close to him, but he did have dinner with Emily Babbage. She was really focused on the protomolecule and his experience on Illus. She has some very pointed questions, and he went along as that was their strategy. Him and Bobby talked about it before he went, and thought that he should entertain her questions and then try to figure out some things about Sovater in the process. And while I went over all of that in my breakdown video for the first three episodes, we could tell that something's going on with these two, Babbage and Sovater. We can guess that it's likely connected to what Bobby found in her investigation investigation with all the weapons, and we know they're leaving Mars on a ship called the Barkeith. I think the other really interesting part here is that after his dinner, he was immediately attacked by these other people wondering why he was asking about Sovater. 
that paints the picture that there's a bigger conspiracy going on as well. It makes you wonder about the behind the scenes stuff, which feels a lot like what's happening at Tycho at the same time. And we know it all boils down to the ring gates opening. This has turned everything on its head. People are looking to get colony ships together. They're racing out to be the first to get to this planet or the next. We saw recruitment signs behind Alex when he was on the shuttle. So there's a lot going on, and that presents opportunities for people to try to grab power. And I think that's a good place to leave it. I said I was going to make a quick video, and it still looks like it's probably about 10 minutes. But let me know in the comments what you think's going on. If you've read the books, please mark any book spoilers accordingly. Don't give up the game. Let me know how you think everything's going to play out, where things are heading. Also, let me know what you think about this format. I was out of town this weekend on a trip that was planned a long time ago, so I didn't really get to do any bonus material. So I'm curious to see what you guys want. If I do this again next week, I'll do it much sooner instead of waiting to the day before the next episode comes out. But I'm open to suggestions. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.